inevitable. Like a baby's toy. I'm totally Batman. Oh man! Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> ah. Communing with the Earth spirits. Welcome to California, bud. Kawabunga. The world of magic. After that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Hey, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of, you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is out Outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds, outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Secondary Heroes podcast. It's the end of January 2023, and that means DC has a brand new flashpoint for us to change their entire future. This hero is Trevor, and joining me as usual is... Hey, guys, it's Prague. And this is Alexander Wolfgang. Hey, fellas. Did you guys Hello. hear about the news? The big news today? Oh, yeah. I was you ready did. for it. I did. I know. The you texted news. me, and I'm sitting there walking up a mountain going, I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> so this oh. is going to be a prog-heavy co- conversation. No, no. It was we'll, only we'll six minutes. I, I actually, <laughs> so funny enough, after my hike, I... Went to the restroom and watched it all on the toilet. So I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So in case anybody doesn't really know what we're talking about, it turns out that James Gunn and Peter Safran gave themselves a self-imposed deadline of by the end of January, they're going to announce their plans for the future of DC. So, of course, on January 31st, they waited all the way to finally announce those plans and James Gunn detailed 10 new projects they're going to work on. And there's a long time scope for this. Don't expect all these to be coming this year. This, this is a big change for everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was just laying the groundwork for what's to come and how to bridge that gap. And uh, yeah. And obviously the, things can change. But this is kind of the idea of where they want to go moving forward with the DC Cinematic Universe. That I think they're calling DC Studios. So what do here we, we are. consider at this point with this big announcement and everything like that, would we consider James Gunn the savior of DC? Well, we won't know until the stuff has something to comes come out. out. Yeah. But look what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, he took oh, no, these, are, these are good total, points. Right. It's something to think about. Yeah. He took unknown characters and made them really popular. But with an established pedigree. True. Guardians of the Galaxy didn't come out in 2008. Marvel was rolling by the time Guardians comes out. They're rolling pretty deep at that point. (laughs) That established some of their main characters already. That's already had sequels, I think, at that point for some of those other films. So, um, this is this is quite the hurdle though, because he's not only trying to create things from scratch, he's also trying to bridge the gap of what came before and making some tough decisions that's going to tick off fans no matter what he did um, mm-hmm. with this change. He was gonna tick off one side or the other. It's the way it is. We're go, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna go yeah. through the slate and what he's what he's doing. Um, but there's but, some changes. There's good, bad, and the ugly. Very ugly. I think the biggest challenge is how recent everything is it's not like i'm rebooting something that hasn't been around since the 60s these just came out all these things these characters are still coming out they're they're still coming out this year that we're gonna have to transition through and so it's kind of that does the audience get exasperated like oh it's another batman it's another superman because it's one thing to be like it's another marvel movie but we're going to a new character or you know having a sequel to a character that we've grown to love this is like you're restarting this character that you've just restarted like three times in the past 10 years. You're restarting that yeah. character again. And it's tough. He might do a really good job, but it's to convince audiences that this is finally, we got it right this time. All those other times we were wrong. 
Well, he does make a good point. Um, I think at the very end of that video, um, he mentions that storytelling is important. It's the key to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think if you've watched what he has done, he has proven that his storytelling is what makes people talk about the, those films. They come out and they're like, oh my God, you have to see this film. It's, it's great. It's heartwarming. It's funny. It's all this stuff. Um, great characters that they fall in love with. Um, so I think that's what hopefully will happen well people mm -hmm. will go maybe there's some people that are kind of fizzed out by it but they might end up enjoying the story regardless of who the character is that's you know the main character of that particular story yeah no it's hopeful because he also at the end he made the point that he just wants unique takes like all of the different writers and directors they're bringing in and for him to just sign off on these Hopefully it's a really whole bunch of creative stuff. Like he's doing his right. big things that he wants to do, but he's bringing in other people that he signs off on. So hopefully they have similar just storytelling abilities as him. And they, they have a lot to work with. There's a lot of stories in the DC universe. There is. And I think what's nice, and I think it's something that Marvel is doing, and they've kind of done maybe more later in their films, like now, uh, Phase 4 and even some in Phase 3, where they're going back to the, the comic book stories themselves and taking those stories that are already written and bringing them to screen. And I think that's what James Gunn is doing. He's taking some of the classic you know, storylines and story runs by different writers um, that have been well-regarded by fans that have read these comics, and he's going to use those to adapt to screen. Which is exciting because those are very different stories, you know, they're not like the classic, you know, good guy versus bad guy type stories. So, I'm interested as mm -hmm. a fan of the comics. Very cool. Well, so. before we get into it even deeper than we already have, let's oh, go over yeah. our socials really quick and then let's jump right into it. So, let's check us out over on crossthestreamsmedia.com. You can leave us mm -hmm. a voicemail over there. You can listen to all of our episodes over there. You can do all kinds of stuff over there. Uh, that is crossthestreamsmedia.com if you don't want to go over there you can check us out over on every social media platform except tiktok except snapchat whatever <laughs> except the popular ones yeah except the pop we're hey, on the dying ones we're the old we're people old. ones we're old. <laughs> yeah. Fine, whatever so instagram twitter facebook mainly twitter so check us out over there if you're listening over on itunes please leave a uh, five star rating and review mm -hmm. um the podcast that'd be really really great uh and then what else oh youtube yeah hey if you watch on youtube you can watch us see what's going on in our backgrounds and um i don't know comment along in the <laughs> in the comments we've got friends who are always in the comments and it's really fun and i like the conversations uh and please like the videos it's great uh just like remember it. all of this that we're doing it's free for you it's priceless to us darn right awesome so hopefully people listen to our upcoming films in 2023 where there are three dc movies coming out it's gonna mm -hmm. be flash blue beetle and aquaman and those movies are still gonna come out james gunn specifically talked about those but the biggest of those is the flash which is coming in july and it's gonna be the flashpoint allowing that storyline to essentially let the creative teams reboot the entire DC universe where you have a built-in kind of deus ex machina to reset everything. It's great. It's great. It's also <laughs> something that DC does a lot. Um, like a Flashpoint was kind of the biggest one. Yeah. But they, they do that a lot. They, they work on kind of a sliding scale way of doing things at, at DC. So you are going to get kind of, you know, the Batman who never really ages much, but sometimes you'll see him in the future as an older Batman, whatever. Um, but it's a way for them to continue with the same characters for, for many years. You know, just do the reset. You can tell this, you know, new stories with the same characters. That's what's happening here. And we're going to have a whole bunch of new characters, but we're actually going to, it looks like, keep some actors and characters that we've already have established. Don't know how that's going to look. <laughs> it's going to be it's weird. It's going to look weird. So in case you're wondering about kind of the most recent, well-performing, well kind of critically received and fan received film the batman with robert pattison that's going to continue on in a universe called elseworlds so it's kind of like a multiverse but it allows their creative teams to continue stories that aren't part of the dcu but still use dc characters and it was a smart move to not yes. can that series because people loved it so much um yeah that, that would have been 
devastating if you had done that and it was a brilliant way to be like hey look we can still have all these other stories but we'll make sure in marketing terms you know tell people in marketing that this is an elseworld story um he seems like he was very keen on keeping everything super focused if it were it was to be a part of the actual new dc universe like you will know for a fact that this is that same storyline because it's going to be the same actors voicing the same characters if it's in a cartoon um they're always going to be the same actor for everything it's not going to be like the way it is now where you have different actors playing different characters on tv versus film you have like two different flashes you have five different batman it's kind of crazy <laughs> so that he's going to streamline pretty much everything i think that was my biggest takeaway of this whole of the whole thing that he said was He's going to streamline this whole thing to where we don't have this confusion of, you know, hey, this guy's playing Flash. But when you watch the movie, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be totally different, which I think is that pretty much going to wipe out for the most part the all like they're pretty much going to X like no, not canon. All of that old TV stuff like people love the old Flash TV show. I mean, oh, wow. I know that it's big monster of the week type of thing. I tried right. getting into it, but monster of the week just kind of gets old after a while. But, um, but that's kind of what he's doing is he's nixing everything that's come before in a way and saying, Hey, we're starting over fresh for the most part. Yeah. That's what it seems like there. As I said, there's going to be some carryover. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. I haven't seen the movie yet. Flashpoint to see why certain characters will continue on, but I'm sure there'll be a point made in that film. That will hopefully make sense to us. We shall see. I also like that he said that the film is great. What was he gonna say? Like, not True. only well, well, so he, you know, say, part right? of a company as like a he's essentially <laughs> the figurehead to be a pitch man. He's not gonna be like, so that new Flash movie super garbage, but we were already required to release it, so it kind of helps us out a little bit. Like he was gonna say that it was great, obviously. Well, I, I, I do wonder though. Through. <laughs> fantastic he what? said fantastic about 16 times in his video <laughs> he's also yeah. said that it was probably one of the best superhero movies he's ever seen yes so but the oh, thing is i've heard flash, this from yeah. a lot of people it's not just him like people are praising this film that have had a chance to see it um which is interesting and like because we i think we had been speculating a lot of us have for a long time why they didn't can this film because of ezra miller like you would think from a studio point like where you have so much on the line this is your tentpole big event for your universe and your main star is in the news like every week doing something just absolutely horrific right um why don't to you can't fans. right like but like, that makes me think that this this has to be a fantastic i can't think of any other reason why you want to scrap would it want to scrap it um it is andre machete who is a great director so i, I don't doubt that it's a, a, a good movie um, but it must be like just that darn good. Like it has to be like the best script. Something in it has to make so much sense that like maybe they had no other way to figure out how to get out of the hole they dug for themselves. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I have faith that it is going to be a good movie. I just kind of wish Ezra Miller weren't in it. Because that's, that's, that's not a good look in my opinion. No. Well, and it could be the whole... You know, maybe it's going to be one of those things where, you know, we we lose Ezra Miller to a even better Flash. I don't know. I, I, I'm not a writer, but like yeah, anything could happen. So, could be like yeah. a Sp- Spider-Verse thing where this guy goes away and we get a. Well, we're still going to have this movie. Like, the movie's been made. It's just done. It's oh, been it's already done. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. OK. Well, it's been I... filmed and, and done and ready to go for a long time. Uh Anyways, that, that that's kind of my one takeaway that I didn't quite like was that they're gonna that they were gonna keep Ezra, and they even have plans to possibly keep him around afterwards after he's Oof. done with therapy. I, you know, there's some things that I'm okay with. You know, you go to therapy, you become a different person, you deserve a second chance. But there's some things that some people do that I don't think <laughs> deserve that. Like you can go ahead and have a have a life somewhere else, cleaning dishes or something. <laughs> good, good for you, but just don't. You don't. I don't think you deserve to be a star in big budget motion pictures. You know what? I've said this about Michael Vick. There's no reason Michael Vick should be in the public eye anymore, making millions right. of dollars after right. the horrendous things dishes. that he did. Yeah. 
he That's should fine. yeah he can have his second chance washing dishes he should not have his second chance in the public eye but <laughs> it's gonna be it's it's well, just gonna it, be it's a kind delicate of marketing tactic. interesting too just with james gunn at this point he's a person who recently disney was like we're gonna cut ties with you due to these unearthed things that you posted about 10 years ago and mm-hmm. everyone was like you shouldn't do that and because they did that I'm sure James Gunn at the time thought that was pretty bad for him, career-wise, rep-wise. But right. if that didn't happen, he wouldn't have went and made Suicide Squad. He wouldn't have got the attention of DC to now have this role. It's really interesting how things have a way of working themselves out, where he would have never wrote that script for himself. He never yeah. would have imagined that those points would have led to this. But it's crazy. As well, it's something I think about quite often. <laughs> that that being fired by Disney was the best thing to ever happen to James Gunn. Yeah, you don't think wow. that he would be doing something else with Disney right now, like in the Marvel universe? Uh, maybe, but I don't know to like that extent. To He's not going to be Kevin Feige, though. <laughs> yeah, I, don't yeah so. I know. Okay, you're right. He is king's <laughs> king of the kingdom right now with with DC. At least it feels like it. Yeah. Yeah, what he says is pretty much good. I, I I know there's some things that he probably can't doesn't have control over. Like I know there were some things that happened before he got there, um, that he didn't have control over. So I'm sure that's why we still have certain you know movies coming out. Whatever. I'm I'm sure. My guess is that he has full control over what new stuff he'll make going forward. But I don't think he had any control over what was already in the can. I think that was the higher ups saying no. We 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 already have enough tax write offs with these other ones. We poo pooed away. Let's release we, we these in theaters and get some money just back. Release it. We'll get some money back. Pretty much. I bet. Yeah, James. Is like, all right. I guess I'll have to work around this stuff. So we're still getting Shazam and Blue Beetle and Aquaman two and I forgot about Shazam, even though that's in the news for all the wrong reasons as well. What? Yeah. I'm sorry. What's your <laughs> nightmare? <laughs> Wait. What? Hold on. What's going on with Shazam now? <gasps> Oh, the lead actor has been saying some things on social media that he shouldn't have. Like, Zachary Levi? <laughs> yes. Dude, he's like, sp- if you're a star, just don't 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 post anything. Like I don't care I, what you're I, I would not if I ever stuff. got to superstardom, I'm not having any forms of social media. Hold on. Yeah, ever. <laughs> Zachary Levi is like supposed to be one of the nicest guys. I can't imagine him mm-hmm. saying anything bad. Wait. We won't discuss it here, but yeah, God, go Lee, really? <laughs> we are no, it's, a, it's, we it's are... just the, the foot in mouth type of thing where you you just yeah. leave your feet on the ground. Well, that's the bad thing or not? Just put your foot in the mouth while during market. Like you're marketing a new film that's coming out. Like what are you doing? Yeah, even if it's completely strange. out of context and completely incorrect, it's just not the time. It doesn't matter exactly. Yeah, it's not the right time. Be the PR guy. Sit down and talk to your, to your fans about the film. Don't talk about your personal views. That's fine if you can later, but marketing and film is weird so yeah james gunn has a lot of uh yeah shazam's coming and so the interesting thing about all these announcements is that they're kind of all over the map you have like big title characters like oh we got superman and we got batman and then they're like we're also doing probably things that most people haven't heard of Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's a nice eclectic mix it really is. It's not something I was honestly expecting, which I probably should have, knowing James Gunn and his love for obscure characters. But I thought if he was going to do a reboot, I thought, oh, it's going to be the Trinity. I thought he was going to go real simple because he already announced Superman like last week. Um, so I thought, oh, he's going to do a simple, you know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman kickstart, brand new. All three characters start that way, just like kind of the way Marvel did. And he kind of did that, but then threw in a whole bunch of other eclectic stuff. So. I am really pleased with that because he chose some of my favorites. So Okay, I mean, really? Because I'm like, this is a whole nother Guardians of the Galaxy type of so situation. I think we should start Kinda. with Superman just because he gave it a date of July 11, 2025. And the entire DC out, universe yeah. is based on Superman. Their problems, mm-hmm. their strengths and weaknesses, everything is based on Superman. Because he's the guy who started it all for all superhero comics. And he's the guy that gained more and more power because there's so many stories written about him and now you have to make villains that are powerful enough to beat him and then when you have regular city level guys like Batman he's not doing anything against intergalactic threats so it's a delicate balance of how do you now portray Superman for the modern age especially because he's always the 
you know, he's raised in the Midwest. He has really good, humble values. He's just that really good guy. There's no bad parts about him. And How do you make him for a modern era? Right, it's hard. <laughs> so it's really and, interesting and, what he's going to do with this. Well, him especially, because he's not known for writing characters like that. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned. I love James Gunn, but I don't know if I would want him writing my Superman. Um, not that he wouldn't have the chops to do a good story i just don't know if it's a good superman story maybe um I, he seems to be hitting the right notes it's all but it's all pretty paint by numbers what he was saying about it like he's talking about how superman wants to uh how he's dealing with you know being both you know you've been here on earth dealing with humanity while also struggling with being a kryptonian like that sounds like what every Superman kind of deals with in every story we've seen. Um, and then he also mentioned that he's also going to struggle with um, uh, being kind in a world that doesn't really like kindness anymore. This kind of like people are jaded. They don't want, want people to be kind. So I, I feel like he's almost making him to be the captain America of the DC mm. universe. You know, kind of like he, the guy from the past, like, Oh, the people don't like to time. be kind yeah. anymore. A guy at a time. Um, I don't know how that'll work. We'll see. Um, I'm curious. I don't know if I'm excited, but I am curious about this one. Yeah, definitely curious. We'll see. Nervous, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Superman does nothing for me. It, it's the same thing with the whole like Captain. You said it, Captain America. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the whole. I mean, ha, I I mean, who knows? Maybe he can change it and make it better. I enjoy Maybe. super certain Superman stories, but yeah, I think they've gotten to a point where they've almost built him up too much. Like it's, it's too much, whichever said they yeah. built him so strong. It's so ridiculous. Um, and you can't backtrack like, on anything because there's no, too can't. many diehards. There's too many people who are like, well, you can't oh, do in that. comic run, whatever Superman's yeah. doing this. How in the movie can he is? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so those yeah, guys who yeah. ask questions at comic con panels, Yes, yes. Oh, My question, guy. maybe you remember me? I was here in 2018. Dude, we don't maybe remember, remember you. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they have to say, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. Uh, how have you been? Yeah, but those How's guys. Mom? How's dad? Yeah. They'll, they'll definitely have <laughs> yeah. problems if they try to change Superman at all. So you have to, it's a delicate balancing act. Uh, yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, him casting Chris Pratt as Superman. That'll be well, fun. Of course. Yeah. yeah, of course. And then yeah. David Batista is Lex Luthor. Yes. <laughs> Actually, that'd be pretty funny. Dave Batista, it's a serious role. <laughs> it is a serious role. Come on, Dave. Of course, today he just mentioned he wants to be in rom coms now. So, no, Maybe he changes. Make it into when he wakes up, he changes like, his he mind knows, on what right? he wants to do. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Hey, I think I'd be really good in comedies. Should I go back and do comedies? See, I guess now you have to place bets on who else Michael Rooker will play. He's already played one character, but he got killed pretty quickly in Suicide yeah. Squad. So I'm sure he'll be recast as somebody else, maybe in heavy prosthetics. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Well, do you want to go to that, or do you want to go to who follows Superman? No, no, let's go follow Superman. That's, we can always circle back to things. Okay, so... With DC, there's you have Superman, but there's also Batman. And the one thing that we haven't really seen in live action is the Bat family. And finally, they actually teased it. They're going to focus on Bruce Wayne's son, Damian Wayne, but there's an actual Robin, and it leads itself to having other Bat family, which we just haven't seen in live action. Like It's in all the various animated forms of Batman, but they just haven't really looked at it at all yep. when it comes to live action. I mean, we got close with that awful Batman and Robin movie, but we won't talk about that because that didn't really count. Why not? No. Anyways, it is <laughs> exciting because Grant Morrison is one of my favorite comic book writers, and he wrote and created Damian Wayne, which comes in at a pivotal point for uh, Bruce Wayne, and it's fantastic. So it, I'm excited for people to get to meet this new character who is one of my favorite comic book characters because he is an a-hole, and oh, I love it. I love a-holes. So he <laughs> causes havoc in the Bat family. And what's also exciting is that this means we're not going to see a Batman origin story for the millionth time. This is going to be a middle of the road Batman who is older, uh, finds out that he has a son that's already, you know, like 12 years old and had no idea that he existed. 
And at this point, he already had several other Robins. So they're gonna you're gonna see Nightwing, and you're gonna see all the other Robins like Tim Drake that will hopefully show up at some point um, in the universe. So I'm will we though? Will we? Though? I'm assuming so. If they're gonna start at this point, I'm assuming they're already established. I don't think they want to keep doing origin story movies. I think they're kind of past that. It I would hope like. so. I think so. The I'm assuming they'll be established. Past it. Yeah, it's over. It's played out. It would be fun because that's the whole fun. That's the fun part about Damien. About Damien is he comes in as this like step kid, pretty much, and be like, "Well, I'm the true son of Batman. You're you were just a psychic. I'm better than you." He plays off that, and it's great. So now I know that we just uh, in our last episode we were talking about some of the other um, DC shows and this new Gotham show, Gotham Knights. Mm-hmm. Are they going to try and bring that into this whole universe, or is this going to be another one of those things that's like, hey, just enjoy this until in, until something else comes out? My understanding was enjoy it until something else comes out. Because when okay. he talked about TV shows, he said going forward, the new TV shows are going to be directly tied into the movies. It's all going to be the same universe. So whatever else is happening out there is either canceled at this point or going to be canceled soon. So enjoy them um. while they last. Glad I brought it up in the last episode then. <laughs> Jeez. <Yep. laughs> yeah. Or Elseworlds. So this be Elseworlds properties. This Elseworlds. Yeah. It's a quick fix for that. I like it. But yeah, I'm really excited. That's that's something I've been looking forward to. They teased it at the end of um the Batman uh sorry, the Dark Knight Rises film, you know, because Talia Al Ghul does sleep with Batman in that film. They kind of tease the fact that she had slept with him and she probably wasn't dead at the end. Like she was kind of faking it. So they kind of teased it, but they never actually had Damien show up. So this is exciting. It's a new direction, a new story finally for Batman. But I thought, uh, uh, sorry, maybe now I'm confused. Is or so we're not going with a Pattinson Batman with something like this? No. This is a whole new Batman. So Patton- Pattinson's Batman is in the Elseworlds. It's like a whole separate universe that exists outside. It's oh, just no. Batman. There's not going to be Superman in his universe. There's not going to be anybody else. Aquaman, they don't exist. It's just Batman by himself. And Joker 2 will also be its own. Exactly. And then Joker, yeah, it will be his own universe <laughs> separate from that too. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Yeah, some things are going to stay like that and kind of confuse me for you. I... I... I was really hoping for a Marvel thing where it could just be straight up all like down the line. Everything's connected. Just everything. I think like, that if James Good would, would have preferred that, but his hands were kind of tied with some of these it's, other properties. Yeah, it's also part of how, what happens when you try to change things midstream rather than thinking like, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, James Gunn has a plan for the next 10 years, but it's based on the 10 previous years as well. Like, you know, you can't just restart it because there's established things already. Like, imagine if Kevin Feige came into Marvel after the first Avengers movie. It would be weird if he tried to get rid of all that stuff and be like, no. So, yeah, it's tough. It is. But here's the thing is Marvel had um, Marvel. Marvel is good. Like, <laughs> well, no, it's they just good planned it out from the start. You know? They walked instead of ran. DC always tried to run and catch up rather than right. walk. They never decided to walk. And hopefully James Gunn decided to walk. Yes, he needs to take like his it. time. No, and I think he'll take his time. My my worry is the higher ups. Studio heads will at panic. A, at HBO, well, studio head will panic. Like, um, you're not working fast enough, or this this movie didn't hit as big as we thought, so we're just going to mm-hmm. scrap this character or the storyline. It's like, no, you can't do that. You have to let those yeah. build. Bad or good, especially let because a lot mature. of those they, they they've gone through so many like higher ups who run like all of Warner Brothers, and now that's owned by Discovery, and it just becomes dollars and cents, regardless of what fans want or what comic books say or what James Gunn's plan is. Yeah. So hopefully but, I mean, they will be they patient. Can't... If they look at the book of Marvel, just look at the book of Marvel. Like right? I I don't understand like. I understand dollars and cents. I get that. But if you've got some of the best superheroes that have been known since the beginning of time at this point, Mm -hmm. like you have some of the most original, like 
superheroes that everybody still loves to this day. Like, yeah, let those superheroes marinate a little bit. And it does it. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, part of it is also just the idea of where we are as a society. And some people are superheroed out. Marvel or DC doesn't mean anything. They're just, I've seen a lot of superhero movies. I've kind of had my fill of them, regardless of what company is producing them. Yeah. That too. I'll agree fully because I'm one of them. I mean, I'm feeling the fatigue. Remember when we were getting the, all those star Wars, like back to back to back. I, I felt the Star Wars fatigue, and now I'm feeling superhero fatigue. It'll come and go, I think. No, and it that, will. That's why it depends on the stories. Like, I'm definitely over the origin story. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see an origin of Superman being blasted off of Krypton. I don't want to see Martha Wayne's pearls fall down. I don't want to see any of that stuff. I'm yeah, good. We've, we've done it. <laughs> like his, like So another one that's coming out is Supergirl. Um, and that is based on a story that just came out like a year ago. So that's really new. That's a really brand new story and a new take on that character as well. So that one I, I really seems liked, a little interesting. Yeah. yeah, that one was probably the most intriguing just of his pitch because he didn't pitch that many things. But that one of just mm-hmm. having Supergirl being kind of jaded when she comes here. Yeah, it, it's a different attitude. Much different attitude. And Tom Kane's a great writer, and apparently uh, he is working on, possibly working on the screenplay for this. He kind of was shady about it online, about having to work on a Hollywood project that he wasn't allowed to talk about. It's like, well, <laughs> I think the cat's out of the bag. I'm pretty sure he's <laughs> the screenwriter of the film. So he wrote the comic. He might as well write the screenplay. That's good. That means he's choosing the right people to write these stories. Yep. Um, and then the Swamp Thing, one. which... Another one Swamp for Thing me. is a lesser-known character for sure. <laughs> And just oh, very to have so. <laughs> his own movie, I mean, all in. Yes. Yes, a fine Alan Moore creation who is fantastic and dark, moody, gory, so good. Did we have a Swamp Thing back in the 80s? No. Feel... We had a Swamp Thing TV show a few years ago that didn't do well. That didn't do well, yeah, I remember no. that. Um, no. Why does Swamp Thing... Swamp Thing is just... It feels like it's in the back of my nostalgia brain. Maybe I'm you thinking Toxic of the Black Lagoon or Toxic, toxic Procedure Avenger? or something like that. Yeah. Probably think of Toxic Avenger. Toxic which is also yeah, coming that's... out as a movie. Ooh. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> watch the original. Yeah, watch the original. Original's great. It's cheesy, it's fun. <laughs> Have a good time. Super um, cheesy. But yeah, it should be pretty good, but it is going to be very dark. Like I think James Gunn even mentioned that it was, you know, darker more horror themed but still tied into he, he, he uh, mentioned that he wanted to have different like thematic choices it, it's kind of right. what marvel's dabbling their toe in with their tv shows of where not everything mm-hmm. is just a traditional kind of advent- action adventure it feels like they're doing a similar idea where it's going to be part of a shared universe but it's going to be different thematically yes you're probably, I mean, definitely going to get different directors that are going to have different styles and different takes on characters. Which is what is needed, because previously mm-hmm. every DC movie had to have that super dark sepia Zack Snyder effect. I did not care for that. But DC Personally. also needs to find a that that delicate balance of being able to appeal to the younger generation as well. I mean, that's like, look sure. at Iron Man and look at... Look at I know that I again I'm comparing everything to Marvel because that's kind of all I know at this point. Right. But Marvel, like that's why it was so lasting, is you can you can get a ten year old and watch that. Like I'm not gonna take a ten year old and watch Superman versus Batman or anything like that. They won't they won't sit through that. It's too boring. Don't it's take too any long. Age group to see that. No. Don't take don't take any age group or even. <laughs> Or Justice League. I'm sorry. No, Justice no, I League get what you're saying. One. Or yeah. not either. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just don't take anyone to see any of those films and it helps. But that's, yeah, the, exactly. that's the thing. Like, that's the balance that he needs is to be well, able no, to. Like, I guess to your point, would you show the Christopher Nolan Batman movies to younger audiences? No, I, no, I wouldn't. But that's good writing, though. That's good writing that's that what, can. But that's what James Gunn wants. He wants. It's good to a very specific writing. audience, though. It's a very adult right, yes. audience. But I, I, to your point, I feel like Marvel. You see kids wanting to dress up at Halloween as Iron Man or Captain America, or Thor or anybody. Yes, 
I mean, even DC comics are geared more towards adults than children. If you were to read them, Mm -hmm. this is a different, I don't know. But could that be audience? Yeah. Is, is that the problem? Is that DC is too adult to where? No, No? I don't think that's a problem at all. I think it's bad storytelling. I don't know though. Maybe not to the mass market appeal. Right. People the money return, like the return on investment they're looking for, because everything is ROI. That's mm. that's probably the delicate balance. Because he did well, we have, do have an animated show, risky ideas. I mean, yeah. just to have the authority, which is a bunch of characters that Speaking it kind of looks adult. like a combination of Invincible and the Boys. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't know the source it's very material. Just his very rated. description. Yes. It just that I was, that's all that I thought about. <laughs> It's, uh, it's based on an old Image Comics uh, comic book that merged with DC later. So it's very uh, adult. It's very good, by the way. It's Sorry, what was that called? The Authority. The Authority. Oh, okay. So is the this going to be the all animated? No, no this, this is, is a, a live action. Okay, this yeah, is I'm, live action. I'm going over the films first. This one is just, it says starting a group of characters that think the only way to fix the broken world is to take things into their own hands so again that's the kind of they get messy omni man view of the world but mm-hmm. it's also kind of dark and brutal like the boys and they're very underground like they like like people like superman and batman have no idea they exist like they do everything like off the record underground deep state kind of stuff yeah, and, and i'm guessing fun. you you read those comics way back i was like a kid that was like in the early no not early mid 90s i would say Okay. Back when like Wildcat, uh, yeah, they came out back then. Ninety three, ninety four, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. So these Out are these are the kind of movies that I'm sitting here thinking of, like Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, you mm-hmm. get this as- ensemble group and whatnot. Yes. Uh, we saw him obviously take a franchise that nobody really knew about and turn it into a massive hit, and now I, it's almost like he's trying to do it again without using like the justice league or anything that well, anybody I mean, people knows really liked his version of suicide squad as well. It's the same. Right. Kind yeah. Of lesser known characters. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like suicide squad was f- fun to an extent. I mean, it definitely, I mean, it's, it's no Marvel, but it was a fun little Compared summer movie. Compared to DC, I would say that it stands out, but it definitely, if Marvel released that movie, people would be like, oh yeah, it's middle of the pack or nothing right. special. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. True. But you did mention animated and weird cast, and so Creature Commandos is going to be the first show. It's actually animated, and it comes from James Gunn himself, and this one is a very eclectic cast of characters, but it does have that art style that just stood out like he showed that one still frame from the comics and i was like okay <laughs> this distinctive we'll see apparently it's already almost done i guess they've kind of already put it in production so now I'm the interesting guessing it'll be released this year the interesting thing that i found with that was he did mention at that point that the actors that are going to play some of the animated characters are also going to play mm-hmm. live action. So we're probably going to see some of these characters in this cartoon come to real life in maybe a movie or TV show or something like that, which I actually Perfect. found pretty interesting. It, it kind of made me want to watch the cartoon. Yeah. Is it going to be a show? Is that what it is? It's a TV show. Yeah. Okay. HBO max, I guess. Yeah. I Plus may end max, up just watching called. just this because it, it might be kind of cool to like, you know, fall in love with a character and then go, oh, that character is just going to be in a movie next. Yeah, I like that idea. I like I like keeping it kind of streamlined like that. And, and in then, video games, he did mention, but we'll get yeah, to that. Yeah, in video games too. Where there, there's a super area that no other franchise really connects with. It's like, that's a separate universe. <laughs> right. Has been for years, yeah. So, Would the, we the consider fun. Star Wars though? Star Wars kind of started dabbling into the 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 video games and kind of intertwining those. Maybe they're dabbling into bringing the mythos in. Okay, yeah, not necessarily yeah. the characters. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But uh, <laughs> wink, wink. The fun part next is 
you mentioned HBO Max, and I loved that in the description of these TV shows, it was referenced HBO shows. There is right. Paradise Lost, which is a Game of Thrones style show. <laughs> you had to make sure to call that <laughs> Wonder Woman's like area, but with the Game of Thrones theme. So I was like, okay, so I get the branding of HBO plus the instant recognition in my head of what this could be. Yeah, he even made sure to throw in Westeros in there for good measure. Yeah, like, well, yeah, it's just like Westeros. Even the image that he's showing is like these Wonder Woman type Amazon women with a knife going Amazonians, through a dude's yeah. neck. Yeah. Like it seems like it's going to be pretty gory. If it's, if he's saying it's going to be like a game of Thrones I, and I see that image, I'm sitting here going, I think I'm all in on this. Yeah. This I'm, be I'm fun. definitely intrigued by that one. <laughs> pretty much. And then there's yeah. lanterns, which is a true detective. Like, I was like, dude, wow, what yeah. is going on? He's like, what other shows on HBO do we have? Oh, yeah, uh, True Detective. Like, oh. <laughs> what other HBO shows? Can't say shows? Mindhunter. No, not Mindhunter. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll go with this instead. We'll go with True Detective. Yeah. Surprised there wasn't some Sopranos or The Wire version of some DC show. <laughs> well, there will. Next, next phase, phase two, chapter two, or whatever they're calling it. But that's, that could be interesting. I mean, obviously, if it actually is as good. As True Detective, it could be great. But to also both have Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan as both Together. lanterns. Yeah, rather than always distinct stories. Yeah, I think that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. See? New takes on these things. I like it. Especially because Green Lantern has failed to start since Ryan Reynolds touched it. So to have mm. it just to be a TV show, maybe it's a good place. And what's interesting is he said that this is going to be terrestrial based. They're not going to be up yeah. in this in this in space flying around, which is kind of the opposite of what James Gunn has done, right? Like he usually takes these bigger, larger than life characters and makes it crazy and over the top. So this is a different approach. I kind of like that. And he says it's going to be very important to the main narrative of this first phase. So whatever they do, whatever they uncover is going to be a big secret to whatever they decide to do. Phase one. They are policing Earth. They are. From what? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The X Men. Well, Dark Side. Um, it, it's definitely X Men. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, yeah, <this is> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a joke, people. I'm, There's a moon uh, gene. We've discovered it. <laughs> Kevin Feige knocks on his door one morning with a gun pointing at his head. <laughs> And then there's also Viola Davis has been Amanda Waller and a lot of different things. And now she's going to have her own show because Viola Davis is great. Like and so why not give her latitude to do what she wants? Pretty much. <laughs> um, was, she, was she in Suicide Squad? Is that who I'm thinking of? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she's. they said that she's going to join Peacemaker or something like that? Well, she's oh, in sure Peacemaker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was in Peacemaker season one, and then uh, she was outed as being kind of bad. Um, so gotcha. Now everyone knows that she's bad, so that's going to be interesting to see where her story takes her. It's supposed to be a wild story. And this could, it's supposed to feature um, the characters from Peacemaker, so this could be like a Peacemaker 1.5, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> before they do season two. And then it ties into how to get away with murder. So. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Girl, oh, Booster Gold. Can't forget oh, yeah. about Booster Gold. Sorry, Booster Gold with the imposter syndrome, <laughs> where he's from the future, and so he's not really a superhero. He just has tech from the future. But he's like a loser or something in the future, and he comes yep. back no. to the past. <laughs> and now he's like, like I like the, the premise of it, because it's that whole idea of like Leonardo da Vinci was a time traveler. Think how brilliant he would look. Like, if you went back right now and you brought your phone with you, people would be like, what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly. you didn't do anything special you didn't make the phone you just bought no. it no yeah that's it <laughs> well, look at me yeah i think it'd be fun i think this is a, a typical james gunn type character so i think if anything he can do very well with this particular character especially if you get the right person in the role well i expect to see a whole lot of james gunn's brother in all this stuff oh, sure so. of course <laughs> uh every movie is something gonna be weird in. looking of course wasn't he like a weasel in the second Suicide Squad or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. He was weasel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The weasel. I mean, his brother's, I'm sure. A nice person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's a good guy. Um, 
so yeah, that was I think one of the last one. I mean, obviously they're, they're going to keep some of these other shows. Um, yeah, Teen Titans Go, which is still going to be ongoing. That's super popular. You wouldn't want to get rid of that. That's probably a big bread and butter type thing. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see Blue Beetle and Aquaman, how that really ties in. Because that's after, I guess it happens after the Flash um, point. Yeah. the Flashpoint. Yeah. So that means they are definitely sticking around. Well, where does where does this announcement leave you guys with DC? I know that we're all kind of, we, or at least from what I've understood in the past, talking to you guys, you've both been kind of like meh about DC. Where does this now put your headspace with DC? It's a mixed bag for me. Like I'm super excited for the new stuff that he announced, and I'm super bummed about some of the other stuff that they're keeping. So it's kind like, of like for instance, the lose. Aquaman and. Right. Like, I, I just don't care about that at all. Right. Um, I don't know anything about the Blue Beetle yet. That could be great. So that that might be fine. But I don't care about Shazam at all. And the Flashpoint stuff just sits, doesn't sit well with me. So don't care about that. But I'm like, but I'm finally getting some of my favorite storylines by Grant Morrison in live action. So it's like, I almost, I'm okay with everything else. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest, like, I'm too happy for that to finally happen. So, all right. And Trevor? I just want the Bat family on screen. Yeah. No, I feel like it's that tempered excitement. Just like, you know when Stranger Things tempered season four yeah. ended? And I was like, I- I'm all in on Stranger Things. And then it's like coming in 2024. Right. By like, then I do? don't care. Like it's, it's cool years. that a new Superman's being launched. But July of 2025, you're going to have to remind me. Because mm-hmm. I can't be excited <laughs> for that today. There's too much stuff between now and then. There's a lot of stuff coming out. But that's then. the only problem. There's we talked about all the stuff coming out this year. Right. And we still have to finish old legacy stuff this year to reset me even being excited and forgot that they're rebooting everything. It's it's a weird dichotomy of thing like be excited down the road. We're still releasing stuff in the meantime that is the same stuff you didn't like previously, just sequels. It, it's it's a tough thing to like I'm happy that DC's finally, like, I'm not the type of person to be Marvel DC camp. I could care less. I like good stuff. I, right, I really don't why. care what the franchise generates it. Give and me a so good I'm story. excited for them to, like, I love Superman. I love Batman. I love all those different stories. So for them to finally do good versions again, all in. But it just, it takes a while to get there. And in the meantime, we're going to have, like, Secret Wars and... Kang is going to be on full display in the Marvel Universe. Like, I'll be excited once we get to 2025, but think of how far Marvel is going to be full on onto Phase 6 by then. Fantastic Four and X-Men are probably yeah. going to be all in. It's 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 a by tough, point, it's yeah. a lot of attention to draw to you. And that's not even mentioning all the TV shows that are going to come out in the meantime. But competition is good. Competition I think. is good. It, it so, looks yeah. good for Marvel. Hopefully they generate yeah, the stories. <laughs> Because yeah, they've been they were talking about um, the most viewed superhero shows of 2022. And they're mm-hmm. like, The Boys was number one. And I'm like, well, that checks yeah. out. I was like, And they're like, oh, because so, Marvel's just releasing garbage. And I was like, well, 2022 is what? Moon Knight? Um, She-Hulk and Miss Marvel? It's not exactly the strongest set of Marvel things. If you took three properties out of Marvels at right. once, that's probably not going to be their class A tier titles. And I enjoyed those just fine, <laughs> but they're not just their best fine. of the best. Yeah, they're right. just yeah. fine. But they were just fine. They're not the boys. <laughs> yeah. All right. They're just not. So, and if the boys are doing that well, then I think DC is going to be just fine. Going a There's little harder. definitely attention for it. But yeah. with mentioning the boys as a standout, It's worth noting that of the top 20 original streaming shows, The Boys and Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power were the only two things that aren't on Netflix. Hmm. (laughs) So Netflix kind of owns everything. (laughs) You really still do, huh? (laughs) That's pretty wild to think about. Wednesday this year, and they also had, uh, or last year I should say, and then they also had Stranger Things. New season. So many people um, subscribe to Netflix that they make trends themselves. Yeah, they like no one would peg Wednesday is going to be the biggest hottest thing. Right. But Netflix generates their own buzz. They have a brilliant marketing machine that just generates upon itself. Yeah. Think how big Squid Game was. No one knew yeah. about that show. 
I will say, I think a lot of it too is a lot of people like to do those and, and Hey, maybe there's something in this is uh Netflix has people out there that they're hiring. Like for instance, TikTokers and stuff like that doing silly dances and saying, right. Oh, I got this dance from, from Wednesday. And right. now everybody's doing the dance from Wednesday. And it's like, I think I need to watch this Wednesday show. What is this all about? Or like, there's a whole nother dance or something. Oh, uh, Matilda has this dance. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have seen Matilda yet. I, I personally haven't. It's I haven't. hers. Uh, good. Was, I do. Hers good. That's the it thing is me. like, yeah, that's another thing. All I see is that dance of the girl jumping through the door and doing the dance. Right. And it's like, this is a TikTok dance. <laughs> it's a yes. TikTok dance. And, but it, it puts Matilda in your head. It puts Wednesday in your head. It's almost like someone's hiring people to go out there and say, hey, influencer, uh-huh. do a stupid uh-huh. dance. Netflix knows where to spend their money. It, it's got to be. It has to be. I mean, <laughs> I think of the entertainment it. algorithms that Netflix has created since they launched. They probably have cataloged entertainment more than any company around. Mm. And to use that and extrapolate it out for short form videos is probably an easy connection. Because there's less data to analyze. If it's a 15 second video versus a two hour movie, it must be much easier to classify and categorize. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So my yeah. Fortnite collab with TikTok on their dances. There's Smart a big move. thing to <laughs> HBO Max is going to become Max. It's going to combine with Discovery. And that's why it's difficult mm. to be like, I'm going to be excited for something coming out in 2025. There's yeah. going to be a lot of stuff in the meantime. And Discovery and HBO are going through quite an adventure themselves. There's no guarantee that within those 10 years that James Gunn has planned out that Discovery owns Warner Brothers and DC is still under the same umbrella. Yeah, because I mean, if the first couple movies of his take a bomb, they're going to be like, eh, let's let's just scrap this whole superhero thing and we'll look and at it again. I hope they don't. I hope they don't. Yeah, let's look at it again in 20 years when the right. trend sparks right back up. Yeah, I, just, I hope they don't go down that road and be like, okay, now put put 12 TikTok dances in your first movie. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, no. I don't want to sit through that. <laughs> I just no. don't. <laughs> oh. I have a feeling Shazam's going to be that way. Oh God. That's what the not. first one did. He flossed in the trailer for That's like yes, a year before the movie came out. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a full year. God, that marketing was forever. Well, Um, I did look up what Zachary Levi said. Now I understand. (laughs) Yeah, it was unfortunate timing. Who knows what's going (laughs) through that guy's head. Like James Gunn mentioned it. He's like, I'm not going to agree with everything that all of our creative team says. It's just the timing of it. Like James Gunn didn't say that. But literally, if you're going to say something, don't do it right a month before your movie's coming out. I have. Oh, be smart for real. <laughs> because it and that was the problem is like it really didn't even need to be said it didn't need to be said what he said was so dumb like so dumb. it was <laughs> like, like, what blanc said so dumb it, it was unearthed three, other stuff three that, or four words happens. that's what it did that's what it did it unearthed all the other stuff and it made it worse it's like yeah. oh okay <laughs> Man, so dude. good luck Shazam. I mean, the the trailer looked like the worst movie ever made. So I'm not gonna say the worst movie ever made. Uh, but close. I mean, Aquaman exists. That's true. All right, <laughs> fair, fair point. <laughs> but I will. Shaz- here's what Shazam looked for me. For me, it looked like um, Space Jam, Space Jam Two. Yeah, it let's does. It let's like- throw let's yeah. let's take let's take the dragons. From this HBO show, Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Let's throw that in there. Let's take all oh, these gods like from Thor. Let's throw those in there. Let's do. That's how it felt. But give it the budget of a CW show. There you go. Oh, oh maybe yeah. worse. No, sorry, CW is actually a little bit better than that trailer. <laughs> Anyways, God, that movie looks terrible. But uh, good luck. All right. To them on that. So just before we wrap up here, I wanted to let people know that you do have. A couple of years before these films come out so please you have time now unlike marvel you can actually read these comic books um go read uh the batman and son comic books by grant morrison go read all-star superman which is what 
probably is going to be based on for Superman. Read these books now. That way you'd be like, oh, I know what the story is about. And you can be just like uh, we were for Marvel. Or I was, also, I guess. if you don't want to read those books. No, don't read them. <laughs> if you don't want to read those books, there are some great uh, YouTube channels that no, actually no, no, will no, no, go no, no. through the entire series. And it'll give you everything from... And sometimes they even change their voices like a mom and dad does to their baby birds. You so, don't want to do that because the money <laughs> you spend on those books goes to the artists. And the artists don't make I agree. much money. So I give agree. them the royalties. These guys are You're good right. people. Like my buddy yes. Mick Gray who inked those. Please. Uh, f- w- wait. Mick Gray. Friend of the show. Mick Gray. Friend of the show. Past, past uh, guest. Go back and listen to our Mick Gray episode. There you go. Actually, isn't that on... Was that on Mixer? No, it should be on YouTube. YouTube? Oh my god, I don't remember. All of them eventually got uploaded to YouTube. Okay, wow, that was a long time ago. Mixer. That was that was the height of the pandemic. Forgot about Mixer. Yeah, way better than Twitch. God, Mixer was Um, so much more fun. Yeah. Oh well. Rip. That's what happens when times change. So, again, temper your excitement. Who knows what twenty twenty five will hold. (laughs) And yeah, half this might year. be scrapped by then. <laughs> <sighs> Takes what one I bomb. Know, what I do know is that Ant-Man comes out on February 17th. That's all that I can look past. I can't look past that date, okay? There you go. <laughs> Prog, which one are you most excited for? Oh, The Brave and the Bold. Okay. For sure. I Grant Morrison, like, his run, yeah. so good. Top notch. I feel like a lot of people just from browsing online just... The Bat Family is probably the biggest trending thing. Everyone wants it. Everyone's been wanting it for years. Yeah. Do it. I think if I was to choose uh, something that I'm excited, I want to see, I want to, I think Flashpoint. I want to see how they're going to Hmm. change everything. I mean, from what he says, it's going to change everything. I want to see how they go about doing that change. I'm actually gonna agree with that because that comes this july so it's not super oh, far there you go. <laughs> is it that soon <laughs> yeah this july. i think so yeah. oh my goodness yeah that is soon okay that's it's great. Machete. it should be it'll be a good film i think regardless so i mean i'm definitely intrigued that because i'm most intrigued just from the marvel lens that this big gigantic huge point has been predicted to happen since wandavision and I don't know how many things have come out since then, but it still hasn't happened. So for them to say it's coming <laughs> literally in this movie, at least I know what I have to watch and I will get the reveal. There you go. <laughs> you know, for gonna a fact, be, it's going to happen. I'm going to be so sad when you are disappointed by that movie. I'm not going <sighs> to be disappointed. I think it's going to be hot garbage. Oh, I'm okay. Intrigued. So... I feel like it's going to be an yeah, epic the word train intrigue. wreck. <laughs> really? Wow. I've never Have seen you? someone get so excited to watch hot, hot garbage. Oh, train wrecks, man. Have you, you not met Trevor? away from him. <laughs> he I, did, I, I thought he was being genuine, that he was excited to actually watch a Marvel movie, but it sounds like he's yeah, just DC excited movie? to watch this. Wait, no, I'm I'm talking Ant-Man. Oh, you're talking about Ant-Man. Oh, yeah. okay. I am excited for Ant-Man. Yeah, but Why? you just said it's going to be hot garbage. No, the Flashpoint. No, flashpoint, See, Alex? now it's now we're all confused. The, get, all, <laughs> no, of our, all of no, our all of our listeners. It's are easy. <laughs> Am man excited? Flashpoint, hot garbage. <laughs> okay. Well, and Alex is go. gonna do well with the new DCEU. I'm not oh, gonna boy. do well at all, man. Don't know <laughs> what Batman's gonna just show up randomly. <laughs> what is he That's doing Batman. here? What? <laughs> he wasn't Batman the last one. Where's Joaquin Phoenix? What's happening? <laughs> Oh, I still haven't seen that Joker movie. Oh, Alex. I know I should have, but I haven't. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm tired. Well, to everyone listening, what are you most excited for? Any of it? All of it? Something in particular? Let us know, because there's a long time for you to let us know before this stuff actually comes out. So you can listen to this episode in two years, and it will still be before most of this happens. So it will still be fresh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a hard thing to think about. Can we just Until repost then, this episode? <laughs> we hope you enjoy, and we'll talk to you next time. Prog out. Adios, y'all.